Hello, everyone. In this video, we will be talking about kinematics. In kinematics, we look at the motion of objects, and we use certain variables to analyze their motion and how an event can change their motion. Some of these important uh, variables we look at are speed, velocity, acceleration, displacement, and time. Speed and velocity tend to be a very confusing topic because they mean the same thing when we consider magnitude. When we talk about the speed of an object, we talk about the distance it covers in a given amount of time. In velocity, we consider displacement in a given amount of time. If a car, for example, travels 5 meters in this direction and then 10 meters in this direction, the distance traveled will be 15 meters. But displacement does not work in the same way. Displacement of the object of the car will be the distance from its starting point to its end point. And this is how we find the velocity for the moving car in this particular motion. So in, vo in velocity, uh, we must consider the magnitude of the movement and the direction in which the car is moving. Now let's talk about acceleration. Velocity is the change or the displacement in time or the change in position over time. Acceleration is the change in velocity over time. A good example would be a car speeding up or a car slowing down when it comes to a stop sign. When we consider acceleration, we therefore see acceleration as the change in velocity over the change in time. Now, we can use the relationships between these kinematic variables to look at how the motion of an object changes due to an event. The most important tool you will have will be these variables and these three main equations for kinematics. You will be using these heavily whenever we're considering problems involving kinematics. Let's look at this problem first. So let's say there's a car traveling at 5 meters per second, and it sees a stop sign. And the driver slams on the brakes. Let's say the acceleration to the brakes is 2 meters per second squared. Now, since the car is slowing down, the direction will be opposite to what it was moving in. Whenever we're considering the opposite direction, we use a negative sign to denote that in the magnitude. And then let's say the car stops in 3 seconds. And I want to know the displacement of the car while it is coming to a stop. So a great way to always start these problems is to list out all the variables you know. So there's five main variables we consider when we're looking at kinematics. We consider the initial velocity, v0, final velocity, v, acceleration, displacement, and time. Now, we know the initial velocity is 5 meters per second. The acceleration, we know, is negative 2 meters per second squared. Finally, the time it takes for the car to stop is 3 seconds. Now, if we study these equations closely, we'll see that of the five variables in each one, there is one of them missing. And they've been designed in this way. So if we know any three of these variables, we can solve for the final two, which is a rule you should remember whenever you're considering these problems. So let's look at what we're looking for. We're looking for displacement. So we want an equation where we have initial velocity, acceleration, and time, and displacement, but not final velocity. That way, we can solve for displacement. And as you can see, it's in, these, in this third equation where we can do that. So let's plug in our values. We know that displacement equals v naught t plus 1 half a t squared. We know the initial velocity is 5 meters per second times the time it takes, which is 3 seconds, plus 1 half times negative 2 for acceleration and 3 for time. After we do this math, we'll see that the displacement of the car is 6 meters. And this is a very basic way to approach kinematic problems that can be helpful. Thank you for watching and see you for the next video. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true no matter what physics class you are taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Remember, if you are a currently enrolled Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services. 
Our tutoring center is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building. You will find all the details you need about these services on our website at www.baylor.edu slash tutoring. You may schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online or just drop in during any of our open business hours. For more information about our current services, please visit our website. Thank you.